Hey, it's Dry Bear. Today, we're gonna to talk about outposts, why they're important, what you can use them for, and why you should make one in the first place even before you finish the main story. First, you should come hang out with me on my live stream. If you don't come hang out with me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Dry Bear, the next time you pick up an item, your companion's gonna remind you that you're carrying too much. But first, the question, why should you have an outpost? Starfield, for all its glory and splendor, does have many flaws, and outposts do alleviate some of these and help make them feel a lot better. Namely, helping you manage your storage capacity and being able to store materials without going encumbered or overloading the cargo on your ship. Being able to transport resources between outposts and complete supply missions where you are required to send resources to a specific location. Having all your mission boards and bounty retrieval boards in one location so you could very easily achieve it, especially in a place that is not scanned for contraband. Having a location where you can do all of your research, craft, crafting and development without having to bounce between locations or overload the areas on your ship and having a cool place for all of your companions to hang out if there's not room on your ship for them to be with you. So let's dive into it from the top to the bottom. The first thing you want to think about is where you're going to be putting your outposts. There is not only a limit to the amount of outposts you can have based on the skill that you have available, but also a restriction on where you can put outposts depending on what your skills are. If you look at a planet location, most planets have a place you can land and create your own outpost um, and have a landing location in that outpost as well. But if you look on the left side, after you scanned it, you can see that it's type rock. It's usually one of the best because it's more solid. You also want to look at the gravity, the amount of temperature and the oxygen density inside of the atmosphere. High O2 is really good. You can get away with average uh, and anything in between those two as well. You also want to kind of have lower ends of the fauna and flora as it will be easier to declutter the area and you'll have less things attacking you. And you do want to make sure that things are available that are useful for you, right? Certain resources that you may want to mine in that location. No, it's not the end of the world because you can create cargo links to allow you to ship other resources that aren't on that planet over to your main outpost. To expand your outpost development, there's two main skills that you want to be aware of. The first one is under the science category when you press P on PC, and that is going to be the outpost engineering. What this does is it allows you to construct higher level nodes for your outposts. And these are super useful because it can go from having a very small storage item that you'll have to put a lot of into a medium size like this one, or being able to get even bigger sizes that are twice the size of this, that carry more, hold more. You can make bigger modules, you can get extended versions of the decorations, you can keep making it more and more advanced. The other skill is under social, and this is gonna be your outpost management. This allows you to get additional cargo links between outposts, which is very useful. You can also add additional crew to your outposts and increase the amount that outposts extract resources at that outpost as well, which is exceptionally valuable. The last skill that's not as needed, but it is super useful as it extends your reach and range for outposts is gonna be planetary habitation under science. When you get this one, it allows you to build outposts on more planets with more harsh conditions. Personally, I don't like doing this just because it means that when you step outside your outpost, you have to deal with those harsh conditions. You'll still get conditions like burns or lung damage and things like that. And your companions have to be limited to the outpost as well. But it does allow you to build there and it does increase your amount of outposts as well. So if you want to do extreme gravity or extreme conditions like deep freeze or inferno, you can definitely do that with planetary habitation. And the useful part is being able to increase amount of outposts if you are using more than the base eight. Now, how do you start an outpost? Well, bring up your scanner. On PC, this is pressing F, and you'll see it down in the middle of the screen, there is a button called Outpost, and next to that is the hotkey R. But it's important to look at the hotkey because it'll tell you how many outposts you have left to make before you're capped out on your max outpost. You can see that next to outpost in the bottom middle, it says one, which means I can only make one more outpost before I've reached my limit and I'd have to go delete an outpost somewhere else on some planet in order to create a new one. But you can press R and this will bring up the build menu and be, allow you to create your outpost. If you already have an outpost here, it'll create the build menu down on the outpost itself. But if you're somewhere where you don't have an outpost, when you press R, it'll create the outpost button. And this will allow you to uh, create this in a location to start an outpost. This outpost will have a range that it can reach and where items and buildings 
can be placed to be part of that outpost and has a limitation on how far it can go. When your outpost beacon is down and you bring up your scanner, you will see this kind of VFX faded gr uh, grid line here. And this will show you the reach of your outpost node. When you're on the outside of it, the wall will be red. When you're on the inside of it, the wall would be yellow. And this tells you how far that outpost node that I've created over there reaches, which means that everything that the light touches is, wait, no, everything <laughs> that is inside of these yellow walls can be placed down for an outpost. So if you're inside an outpost, you can create it that way. Now, when you're in an outpost, you want to delete an item, you have to be in the modify menu. So you'll be able to bring this up and go to an item and delete it. But the difference is for an outpost node, they decide to make it different than anything else. If you're looking at an outpost beacon and you're in the build mode, it won't work. You have to delete an outpost by exiting the build mode, going to your scanner, and then going up to the outpost. Bring your scanner down so you're within range of it. And when you hover over it with a scanner off with no build mode active, it'll bring up the special menu for the outpost beacon. And this is where it allows you to rename the outpost. You can build things from the outpost and go into build menu from this. But if you hold down R on PC for the outpost rename, it will delete the outpost beacon, which will delete the outpost on this location as well. This is the only item on an outpost that you have to be out of the build menu and out of the scanner in order to actually delete it. Every other item that exists in the outpost, you have to bring up the build mode, go to modify, and then you wanna go to the item and hold R to delete it there. Once you're ready to build, you press F and go into your R outpost mode. And there's two different modes that you'll have with this. The, uh, the modify mode is the one that it will default to if you're just kind of opening. This allows you to move items. You can press E to move something to a new location if you want to, relocate it. And you can also toggle view by pressing V on PC, which allows you to go up and you can click on items and you can move them around if you want to put them into a different spot. I found this very useful for connecting output, li output links as well over long distances and being able to clearly tell where your excess is for the outpost space. But if you're in the build mode, you can press tab to go into the, uh, or in the bonafide mode, you can press tab to go into the build mode. And you can see in the top right corner, this is where all of your modules will show up. On PC, you do Z and C to tab through. You'll have different buttons for console. And all of these will have required resources to place down and requirements that allow them to place in different areas. The first one you'll want to put down after you put your outpost module down is going to be power. Now, a bit of a note on power here. There's two main types of power for the overall outpost, solar and wind turbine. Uh, you can get advanced versions of these and solar rays and all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, panels and things like that as you upgrade your outpost engineering. But you do need enough power to be able to power your outpost. In the bottom right corner, you can see needed power, which is how much the outpost is currently using, and total power, which how much power is being provided by what you've built in the corner. The thing I want to direct your attention to, though, is if you look in the top left, underneath the build requirements, it says produces a certain amount of power. Depending on the planet that you're on, each of these types of power will change in value. So where you are landed on the planet, uh, you want to check to see which one is going to be more valuable. On the planet I'm on in the Shoza system, you can see if I swap between wind turbine and solar array, that the wind turbine gives far more because there happens to be more wind and less solar radiation on this specific planet. Whichever one you have the most of, you probably just want to get more of those because they'll be more valuable. Even especially if you have higher levels of these, you can very easily put these down and get some really good value out of the power that you get from that. Keep in mind that you can get attacked on some planets and these can get damaged. You'll have to go repair these to make sure that they're working. And if at any point you go into the build menu and you see in the bottom right that you don't have enough power, it means either you need to build more power modules or you need to repair the ones that might be damaged. Next is harvesting resources, a big value add from having a outpost in the first place. You have extractors that can extract anything that's available on that planet. And depending on what planet you're on, it will have a different list of extractors. This planet happens to have cobalt and nickel on it. It also has water and I can create water vapor as well. The major thing about this is that usually the liquids like these, like water, water vapor can be grabbed anywhere. But the specific resources, the inorganic resources have to be located on the ground themselves. And so when you're running around the planet, you'll actually find in your scanner mode that some of the ground areas have a highlighted color. And that means that that resource that you see, you can see it ends here and starts right at this line. And when we look at this, that means there's cobalt in the ground 
on this location right here. So if I'm looking to get cobalt, I can then put a cobalt extractor on top of this ground location and pull out that resource from it as well. So I'll place this down as long as there's enough power, it'll start generating extra resource and store it in its personal inventory. But there's a problem. These base extractors, even the higher level ones, don't have that much storage on them in general. They usually will go up to 15 or 20 before they cap out. So what you want to do is start creating areas where you can store that resource that you're extracting from the ground. And you go to storage and you'll see you have options for storage solid, storage liquid, storage gas, warehouse small, which is non-resource based items. And then you also have a transfer container, which we'll get to in a minute. In the case of cobalt, it is a solid. And so we will want to create a large container that I can put all of this in. I'll make a small one because it's the one you start out with. And then you can actually just kind of show where it is here. Keep in mind that placement matters. If you see on this little thing here, most storage containers will have an output on it and then an open on the size. You actually want to pay attention to that because it prevents you from stacking things onto that joint on the side here. And so you can see I can only put it left and right for stacking resources uh, when I'm putting those in there as well. This has more uh, container storage than the extractor here does. And so what I want to do is I want to, when this extractor finishes extracting a resource, I want to start storing it in this container right here for solids. And you do that by going into your F, into outpost mode, and then you can actually go over here and you can create a, uh, in the modify, you can actually create an output link by hovering over this, hitting right click on PC, when you'll see this red line appear. And then I want to drop this in here to this, which I do by pressing E. Now, anything that this creates, it will try to fill this container first. If this container gets full, it'll still use its own personal storage. And what's great is you can actually link these together. So if you build a bunch of these in a row, you can link them all together in a row and it'll try to fill the end of the output link chain and then the, the, the N minus one, N minus two until they're all full until the last one in the chain. So either you create more small ones, you can create a bigger container as well, but it'll start extracting all of this resource here, this cobalt, and start putting it in a container. Now there's two ways you can go about collecting lots and lots of resources. First is just to find a star system that has a lot of resources in it and build outposts in those areas. What I personally did is I went to the Indum system. It has almost all the resources you need, save a few on uh, specific things like, like uh, tungsten I had to go somewhere else to get. But in general, you can get most of the resources you need in one star system. So what I did is I would go and scan a planet. And once I found out it had a resource that I wanted, like copper or aluminum, I would create a farm, which is just an outpost that has all of those extractors in one location. And then I would have resource collectors there. And when you first start doing this, you can just fly to the outpost, grab all the resources, throw it in your ship, fly back to your main outpost and store it all there. But you'll find ways that you can go around and you can get, if you need iron, I have iron location on iron farm here on this. I have a helium farm on the moon because this one you can see is loaded with helium. It's got tons of it on there. I also have other farms here for getting, uh, this one is cobalt and nickel. I have tungsten farms, places that just have very large concentrations of a specific resource. But after a while, it gets pretty cumbersome to have to fly to each planet, grab the resources, bring it back to your main storage, and then have it with you. So what you can use is the handy dandy cargo link platform. This is essentially a transfer system that allows you to transfer from one outpost to another. You'll find these under the miscellaneous category for outpost building. You can see you have two versions of it, a cargo link, which is your default version. And then you also have a cargo link intersystem. And you can place these down on the planet and have them send between. The main difference here is that the cargo link base form can only send between the same star system. So planets that exist around the same sun, it's only inside of that and it can't send outside to a brand new system. So if you have all of your outposts in one system, you can very freely and easily send these and these cargo links don't cost any resources to operate. They will constantly be able to send resources between each other and you'll be good to go. However, if you have multi-systems with lots of outposts everywhere, you'll want to use the cargo link intersystem, which if you look at these, the difference there on the bottom left of it, you can see there's an extra node in the bottom left corner of the platform 
And that is actually just going to be where you put in the money, the, re the requirement for using it, which is this right here. This little outpost node is where you feed it what you need in order to be able to use it, which is helium. You need to use helium three in order to, in order to operate the inner system, but it will go anywhere in the settled systems and you can send it out that way. Now, once you have a cargo link created, and this is useful for supply missions as well, when you have it created, run up and on both sides, you'll have this little console here. Click on this and you activate it and you can see that there are all of the other ones that you've clicked on. Keep in mind that if you haven't visited an outpost for a while, it is a Bethesda game. Sometimes these will just drop off the list randomly. To fix it, you just fly over there, click on the console on the other side, and it should reconnect itself and realize that it's there. But hey, it's Bethesda. What are you going to do? The other thing that I'll tell you about this is very important. If you're doing supply missions, you don't have to create an outpost on the planet that you're doing the supply mission for. It will automatically create its own cargo link for that supply mission. Example, I've selected a supply mission just to show you. You can see I have my helium farm here, my cobalt nickel farm. When I hover on these, I have the cargo link of the inner system that I have on that planet. But this one is a supply mission. When I, when I select this supply mission and accept it into my mission list, it creates a mission cargo link specifically for that mission that I can click on here. And when you click on this, you can link them together and then send those resources or whatever it requires to that mission cargo link for the supply mission. And it'll allow you to complete the mission and auto complete and give you the reward that you're doed. Well, the next question is, how do you send anything? Because at first this is very confusing and very <laughs> irritating. I don't know why they ended up doing it this way, but once you understand how it works, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to use the boxes here. So you have the cargo link platform here. You have the ability to send outgoing uh, resources to a new location. You can see what you what the current outpost is and what the outpost you're sending to is. And then you have two containers on either side of the start of the platform. When you go close to them, you'll see that cargo link outgoing is one of the names. And the other one, as you would expect, is cargo link incoming. Anything that gets sent to this location, a ship will actually appear and drop resources off on this platform. It'll land after about five seconds. It'll unload all of its resources into cargo link incoming. And then you can very easily just output link this to storage right next to it to unload everything that comes out of it. And the ship can take off with ease. If you're sending any information or any resources, you can go over to the cargo link outgoing, and this is just a container. You can go here and you can put your resources into it if you want to. And when those resources are in the container, the ship will land, pick up anything that it can inside of the outgoing, fly to the cargo link you've created, and drop it off into that cargo link's incoming. And again, if you have the baseline version of this cargo link option, it's just going to do it all the time. If you make a cargo link output, it'll just do it constantly. Ships will land and take off and land and take off and they'll constantly be doing it. It's free of charge. But if you're using the inter-system variant, every time it flies, you will have to put in some helium into a container that feeds into this. I don't know why they did it this way, but if you look at this, this confused me a lot at the beginning. Cargo link inner system this is the, the fee, the operating cost for using the inner system version. You can't actually put anything in here and you can't you can hit the activate button, button, but nothing happens and there's no UI feedback that it's failing. What you actually have to do is you have to create a container that is <laughs> container for liquid. You can tell that it's the same kind of visual there. You collect, you collect this, then you go into the modify mode and you go create output link and you want to feed it into this container here. And the reason it does that, I don't really know why. Even though these things look identical, this one cannot hold any of the operating costs that you need. <laughs> you have to have a separate container that is output linked into this one. And once it's linked, you can hit activate and the ship will come and collect your resources and send them out. So just make a duplicate. You can make a big one if you have access to it with outport, outpost engineering and then have it out, uh, you know, output linked into this. Hit activate and it'll come and grab the resources and send them off into the new area. When it comes to habitation, you have plenty of options for how you can build your outpost as well. So when you go down to structures, you have tons of these options here that you can create. They all have different variants. And as you unlock more and more uh, uh, options for your outpost engineering, you can get all these really crazy differences uh, for your creation as well, which makes it super fun and interesting uh, for the outpost creation. You can put them together this way. I recommend doing this from the sky, by the way, with the V, the uh, the global version, 
and you will have to create connections between these and each one of these has different lighting, different benefits, and different uh, bonuses to them as well. As you click through, you can do military style, you can make hab round, you can even do uh, all glass in some cases, you can make hallways between them, and you'll unlock more and more and more. As far as I can tell, unfortunately, you have to have one of these outpost airlocks to enter the habitat, the habitat at all, which is unfortunate because I feel like this animation is super long and tedious, but you have to wait for this to cycle. It'll open up and then you can go in inside and have your outpost. Now we already talked about being able to put down your mission boards. You'll find these in the outpost creation down at the bottom underneath the miscellaneous category where you found the cargo links. You can place these all down. They're fully functional. And you also want to create your crafting stations as well. This you can put down for weapon crafting, pharmaceutical research, and stuff like that. However, there's a major bug with these right now, which is absolutely frustrating. <laughs> hey, it's Bethesda, what are you gonna do? Some of the times when you put these down, they will actually run into an error where it says that you have an obstruction that's preventing you from using it. Even though there's clearly nothing, you're doing it inside, there's no in, nothing in the way. You can even modify, pick it up, move it, delete it, recreate it, it still has the same issue. If you're running into this problem, the only fix that I've found is to save your game, completely quit out your game, and then relaunch it on the new save, and it will usually fix these specific issues where it says you can't use the actual construct because it's somehow blocked by something. The next item to be aware of is the crew station, which is under the same category as the mission stations are as well. And what this crew station is, it allows you to assign crew to this location. You can create a little cubicle space for them as well, but this allows you to, for each one, assign some crew to it. So you see I have Lynn here and I have Heller here and you can send people here to work at the outpost and be here uh, if you don't want to have them at the lodge for the main story. The other thing I recommend building is going to be a landing pad for your ship. This is hugely important. I recommend getting one of these at least for every outpost if you can. If you have a very small ship, you can use the small landing pad. This only works for some of the A-class ships, but if you have a B or C-class like I do, you're gonna need the full-fledged landing pad with Ship Builder. So it's, you can see it's pretty large, but it's worth getting because it means that when you land at the outpost, your ship actually lands with you. It's not far away. You don't have to run and go get it. And you're not beholden to wherever it creates the actual landing spot, it can land right on your outpost. And what's great about this is when you go up to this giant pad you've created, you have a console which you can go up to, and at this console, you can buy ships. You can also view and modify your ships as well, which is really, really cool. Which means you're not beholden to going to specific locations to get your mission boards for crafting on your ship. You can keep your ship pretty spacious and clutter free. You can also modify and buy ships, uh, upgrade your ships in one location, and you get all the, all the resources you're farming throughout the galaxies into one location and store it so you can use it to your personal benefit. And you can also do decorations like specific life that you found on different planets on the walls. You can customize it, have it your own way. You can have a place to sleep. You can put down very important objects that you've collected that are important to you and your connection. And you can also be able to just kind of rest, spend time, heal up and save and spot. I think the outpost is absolutely worth getting. The next thing you're going to want is going to be the transfer container for your ship. Having one of these down allows you to transfer items from the cargo hold on your ship to the transfer container, and then the transfer container can transfer it out into the ground as well, and vice versa. Now, honestly, you can just overload yourself heavily encumbered as long as you're close enough to your ship. You can just go super encumbered, walk up and go put it in your ship if you want but the transfer container does make things a lot more convenient by having this available next to your launch pad. As you get further along in your outpost engineering, you'll unlock fabricators, which are actually super useful as well once you get really far into the uh, Factorio side of things. But these will actually just continually produce modified crafted materials, like industrial materials. So you can actually create a giant warehouse, which I have planned for this giant one here. You can put these fabricators down and you can just have them constantly generate adaptive frames or gauges and things like that that allow you to create an empire for selling things. And as you unlock more and more outpost engineering and you research new fabricators, you can actually get a bunch of these to start generating some very high level materials. Now, later on in the story, which I won't spoil here, you can actually create an item on your base that makes it get attacked and invaded constantly. You can also build it in places where there's going to be enemies that invade and try to damage it and break it if you want that kind of tower defense style of mode. And for this, you'll want to use the outpost defenses. 
There's tons of different versions of these. And as you unlock more uh, outpost engineering and you research the options available, you'll be able to have these on top of your base to keep it safe and shoot at anyone that comes in by. You have laser options, you have tick options, you have ballistic options, and you can create these and put these wherever you want. And if you are in a place that's near Varun Zealots or there's spacers nearby or uh, aggressive wildlife that might be attacking constantly, you will want to have these up and available. And as you push further into it, you can also get robots that are available as well. Things that add to production options and they'll kind of wander around and do things as you activate them. And they'll be cool little buddies that kind of help keep it clean. But you can see in the top left, the sanitation robot will add to resource production. And you can also get security robots uh, that will uh, attack enemies that come by. And you can even get more and more robot production as you unlock more upgrades without making this video much longer that's what i got for you today on outposts i recommend having at least one or two it does help make you uh, a more efficient and more effective in the story but of course they are optional if you don't want to mess around with them if you found value in the video leave a like down below leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and i'll see you on my live stream. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.